She was in the shop. That's the vacuum upstairs. No, nobody's here. Mommy is talking to her friends. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. <coughs> Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. Some of you know we've been on vacation. We did have a nice trip. The weather wasn't great. Um, it wasn't horrible either. We had some nice, a couple nice days, but it is just so nice to get away together and for John to have a week off work and just to spend some time together. Span time, and was his birthday also. So uh, that was the reason for the trip. We went to Galveston because we, well, I've always wanted to go there and it's a long story why. We got to have lunch with his aunt and uncle and one of his cousins and her husband. You know, he hadn't seen her for like 40 plus years. I'm trying to think what else. I mean, we just like walked on the beach with the dogs, hung out. We ate a lot. It was very fun. We're back and as soon as we got back, I got what I believe was a sinus infection. I guess it could have been just some kind of weird cold or whatever, but um, I just had like the really bad pressure and to the point where if you even turn your head slowly, you're like, whoa. But I know how to kick those out if I catch them early, and that's what I did. I used to get them a lot. I have bad allergies, and then when I was young, I used to smoke, and that used to make everything worse. Um, I quit in like 1997. Everybody smoked back then, pretty much. Don't get on me. While we were in Galveston, we did visit a lovely local yarn store. The shop was called... Where's the card? Here it is, hang on. So the shop was called Joyfully Stranded Yarn and Beads. The owner was lovely, she was so nice. And something crazy happened there. Is her name on here? I don't think it is. Sandra. She was in the shop when we were there. So normally when we're traveling, we just say Michigan because no one's ever heard of where we're from. And she said, we're in Michigan. And I said, okay, so we're about right, mm, right around here. Uh, that's something you only do well not only if you're from Michigan, but a lot of us do that Oh, she said my son just moved to Michigan with his girlfriend. It's like Muskogee or Musquaguan or something and I'm like was is it Muskegon? <laughs> that's 20 minutes from us. So we drove to Galveston, Texas to meet someone whose son just moved like to our basically neighborhood kind of crazy but you know stuff like that happens all the time when you travel the shop was really cute she was really lovely and just nice and friendly i couldn't go but she did i asked about knit nights and she had a loom there she was working on a really cool rug i didn't film because we were coming back from lunch with family i thought i'd show you what i got so i bought two hanks of yarn from a hand dyer in texas called outside the loop so i got this one which is i can't read of course called happy little things downtown it is fingering weight so like sock yarn isn't that beautiful and then i got this one which i think is dk so i got this also it is dk speckle i was thinking it would make a really fun like hat or maybe some gloves or something i don't know you know me and then I got a Hank of Malabrigo sock that I've never seen this colorway before. It's called Polar Morn and it's, I don't know how it'll come through, but it's really like a, it's blue, but it ha leans very gray. I was getting ready to check out and I was talking to Sandra and um, John was like, hey, did you see the yarn bowls in the front? And I'm like, yes, I did. <laughs> but um, I don't know, sometimes I feel like you can only have so many, you know? So I didn't look too closely at them, but they're made by a Texas potter and he knows I like them. So he was like, come and look at them and I'll buy you one. And so I did pick one out. I thought it was really unique. It's a lot different from, I tend to pick the same colors and the kind of the same look over and over. So it is very different from what I usually get. Isn't that beautiful? And then they're signed and dated. It says Landers. I don't have my glasses on, you guys. I have contacts in, but I can't see up close when my contacts are in, so I need readers. Her name is Marsha Landers. She's in Cove, Cove, Texas, and her company is called Clay Things. I didn't look at her. Um, 
I didn't look at her stuff online, but you can find it at HoustonPotters.com if you're interested in maybe a bowl like this. Like I said, it's just really different. And cause we do live in Michigan and we are like, I don't know, three or four miles from Lake Michigan, fish are still appropriate here. I love it. I barely knitted on the trip. I finished a pair of test knit socks for Super Sock World Championship. I'm not allowed to show them yet. Uh, it's part of the deal when you're moderating and you're test knitting, you agree that you will not show anything. So I can't show them, but I'm going to film them, save the footage for a finished project video down the line when Super Sock is happening and you know after they're out and then they are actually going to my daughter-in-law and her husband one of our boys uh, messaged me yesterday and asked for another sweater so i'm gonna make him a sweater i ordered yarn to dye yesterday i'm gonna start working on you know getting the the design ready i'm gonna do a saddle shoulder for him and i've already got his measurements because i knit him a sweater about a year ago and i was telling john like we really need to train him to ask for a sweater earlier because now it's the end of february and by the time he gets it it's going to be starting to warm up here i did not touch my sweater i did start a sock again those will, that'll be in the finished projects videos that was just a fun one and then when i got home oh i gotta show you these so normally I would save all my finished projects to show you all in one video. Donkey just came down with me. But while we were in Galveston, I had brought with me quite a few hanks of sock yarn because I thought the qualifier for Sock Madness might drop while we were gone. It did, but I didn't have what I needed. So I couldn't start until I got home. You get two weeks for the qualifier. I think it's two weeks. And um, I needed to be near my scrap bin. I have these scrap bins for sock yarn scraps that I use for other projects that I'm working on. And I needed to get home to it before I could start. So while I wasn't feeling well, it was like the perfect time to work on them. And I, they're in Tarja in the round. So I thought I would show you, there are also supposed to be strings that you embroider. I don't like how they look. So I've left them off for now. Um, <laughs> and then some of you will understand this and it won't make sense to some and that's okay too. But when you knit in Tarja, it's kind of hard to do in the round because you don't end up with the strings in the right place as you go round and round and round. So this gave a technique where you twist the yarns in the back and you basically create a seam. Um, and I was joking about it. Well, I wasn't joking because at the time I thought I'm just going to knit them get qualified and throw them away so I don't have to wind all the ends in but it was a lot of work <laughs> there's 34 colors in the balloons and I did not repeat a color and um also I mirrored the pattern which was allowed obviously otherwise I wouldn't have qualified and it actually made it so I ended up with more ends to weave in because when you change it up you know it's just gonna be different but I'll have you know the reaction of some of you when I was like, should I just throw them away? Cause I was gonna, <laughs> or I was gonna give them to one of you who was willing to weave the ends in. I did do it. And I thought I would show, this is the inside. It's looking pretty nice actually, right? That was my big project while I wasn't feeling well. Um, I do have a fin finished projects video coming before too long, but this Thing with the super sock test knitting has kind of held me up because I feel like I don't have a ton of finished stuff. I started getting my 10,000 steps in this week on Sunday. Uh, we walked in the sunshine, but last Saturday was when I was really starting to feel better. There was a local shearing day near where we used to live. We used to live in Holland, Michigan, and like just outside north of town. So in between where we live now and Holland, Michigan, they were having a shearing day. And I said to John like, hey, I think I'm gonna go. And then we got up that Saturday morning and it was snowing and it was supposed to be really, really crappy weather. But um, it just didn't seem like it was that bad. I'm like, I think I'm just gonna go anyway. And he was like, well, I'll go with you. So we went to a shearing day there. I did not buy anything because their store was really busy and packed. I can easily get something from there. And I have gotten things from there quite a few times before. I've been to their shearing days. 
they are lovely it's called shady side farms i'm gonna link their farm shop they do like a bunch of sustainable stuff they grow beans they have two different breeds of sheep so i think they do two different shearing like rounds of shearing and they shear at the end of february because lambs start coming and they like to get the mamas fleeces off before the lambs start coming. I also ran into a friend who I know is friends with the farmer. We just had a generally good time. So I hope you enjoy the video. I feel like it's always fun to watch. I don't know if the sheep are scared, but you can tell very clearly that they are not hurt during this process. And I think that's important for people to know because there are people who think it's just cruel to shear a sheep, but it's actually cruel not to shear a sheep. That is something that humans created, but it is where we are in this world right now. It's cruel not to shear them. Their breeds are Suffolk and Polypay. They get only, I think, only the Polypay um, process for sale in the farm they probably do something else with the fleeces from the suffolk but guys i don't know if you guys will remember last time i took fleeces to the processor that's like the mill that's right in my town or right outside my town i brought him like i think it was three or four suffolk fleeces i got them processed i haven't even had a chance to spin them yet they're just processed into roving in this big bag and i really want to do a quick sock study where i do that and then i have another breed lined up for it the suffolk fleeces that i got from were from a different farm they were quite expensive i thought for what you know they are and they were quite a challenge to process and I was watching her shear the polypay sheep and they looked much cleaner much easier to process so like tell me in the comments if you, if I could work a deal with her to get some of those Suffolk fleeces and get them skirted would you want to buy them would you want to buy them raw again those sheep are farmed for meat and then the polypay for fleeces so they are like farm fleeces if that makes sense it's not like you know coated fleeces it's not they're still going to be dirty they're still going to be hay and all that kind of stuff in them but um if you're interested let me know because maybe i can work something out with her i'd like to try only if i think you know it's going to be good for you guys too it needs to be good for everybody i love watching them seeing the baby lambs i mean there are some teeny tiny baby lambs born it's just really fun next week will be a weaving video so i hope you enjoy the sharing and i will see you soon Hello, it's Saturday and we are going to a shearing day. Do you do you actually care if you see anything? Like is there anything you want to see? No, it's fine to do it. Okay. So it's in Holland, Michigan at Shady Side Farms, but there's gonna be more. So here we go. Hey everybody. Oh say it again. Hey everybody. <laughs> Look, he dressed up. <laughs> Ooh, I hear them. They must be, right? That one yawned. Look! Grooming. I didn't even know they did that. I thought that was an ape thing. 
Oops. Look at this. We're best friends. That one looks like it's got two eyes. Well, they all had two eyes, babe. No, I meant on each side. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Oh, good. Okay, so he is going to take off the belly first. Oh, that's gotta feel so good. Hung them hungry. Uh, probably the stress. They look like peeled oranges. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they? <laughs> As a <matter> of fact. <laughs> so I hope that was fun for you guys, and I will see you next Tuesday. I'll be here Sunday for the live. I hope to see you there. Have a great week. Thanks. I love you. Bye.